the Ed and Janet Show, and today we're in Sydney at Diane's place. She's a member of the Garden Club and a spinner extraordinaire and a weaver. So we're here at her studio. Hi, Diane. How you doing? Very well, thank you. I'm a hooker too. Oh, she's a hooker too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's uh, thank you so much for letting us come and see your garden. It's it's gorgeous. Please tell us about your garden and uh, the lovely theme you you seem to have going with how you have everything put together. Well, it's very much um, a, 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 an English cottage garden, I think. And one lady uh, walking by the other day co made a comment about the garden and my we and me as a weaver. And I said, yes, I'm a tapestry weaver, not a weaver of blankets and tea towels. A uh, tapestry weaver loves color and texture. And she said, ah, that shows in your garden. Yes. It's yeah. very beautiful. Um, would you like to tell us about some of the things yes, you have planted along I here? Yes, I would. This year I'm really pleased with some uh, Cosmos seed that I got from Vessies called Double Click. And oh. they're just a little bit double. There's some pretty pink ones down oh, there yes. and the white one. And the other thing that's special here is that purple dahlia. Mm -hmm. That has been there for five years and I have never dug it up. It's Good gone girl. through all these bad winters. And the curious thing about it is it's a mixture of single blossoms and double. You know, I noticed that and I thought, you know, there's got to be a couple of plants that are kind of growing together in there or something. <laughs> but it's the same, uh, what do they call those, tubers? Tubers, yes. That's interesting. That's interesting. And then the whole border has quite a history in the past three years. Um, first of all, Hydro came along and said they needed to hook up to the new house next to us and they needed to dig a ditch. So they dug a big ditch all through here and put their wires and just upset everything um, that we had um, the cosmos in and had the gardener who comes to help me had to dig them out. So we got all of that done and put back and the lawn growing again. And then last year, the gas people came along and they said, well, we can't go where the electrical people went. We're going to have to go in here and we're going to take your whole bed right out. Oh, plus, plus the cotinus and the apple tree made Is crab that apple. Is the smoke, smoke yes. tree? Yes. Smoke bush? Mm -hmm. ah. And the crab apple may have to go too. Oh. So I came flying out with great emotion. <laughs> so after that the electrical company came the next year and they said well we have to dig up too and we can't go where the gas company was. We're going to have to go in here and they said that the probably the smoke bush would go most of these plants plus they didn't think they could save the crab apple. So I was pretty emotional about it to say yeah. the least. Yeah. And then um, uh, one of the more senior a hydro fellow came with his clipboard and he said, I think we could move it out slightly. And very nicely they did. So the border has stayed and the crab apple tree is still there. They're just beautiful. I think these cosmos may be, may be similar to the ones that Benita was telling us about that were new and she had some too. Oh, double pink. Yeah, yeah yes. I think hers were pretty uh, pink. Yeah, yes, they were beautiful. the pink ones down there, are. Some, there's some double ones there. It's gorgeous. Tell us about your crab apple because I understand it's a bit uh, of an unusual tree This here. crab apple is a beautiful crab apple, one of the biggest crab apples and it's pink right through the apple. Um, it's ready at the end of August and it makes the most phenomenal jelly. The uh, Katu family brought them in. It was, um, the background is it was developed by a Danish fellow from a tree he got from Poland. It was brought to the Dakotas and somehow the Kotus got a, um, a line on it and brought them up from the Dakotas and uh, that's the story behind this um, lovely crab apple. Lovely, you're a lucky girl. And in behind there's a honeysuckle and the name of my studio is Honeysuckle Studio. Huh. And I had another one growing up here, but unfortunately it didn't make it through the winter this year. Oh, it happens, doesn't it? And then the rose above on the arbor is Rambling Rector and it's out uh, beginning of June. So it's just at the end and it oh. makes quite a show. And it was white? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can just see the tail end of a couple of them up there. Yeah. 
Lovely. Would you like to show us what you have growing on the other side? Because okay. you just have garden everywhere. This is Romnia, and Lar this is Larry's favorite. He bought this plant, I'd say, 25 years ago, and it struggles. It's, if it grows where it really likes to grow, and I've seen it in some places in Victoria, it's just a huge, huge plant. But we're lucky. This year we got three blossoms off it. And then this bed here, we, in the spring, um, the gardeners just cut back the Napita Six Hills Giant and it covers this whole bank. And now um, it's going to Autumn Joy. And um, this is... Um, is that a geranium? It's uh, Mer not Johnson's Blue, it's the other one, Rosmond. Is it Rosmond or Rosalind? I'm not one, sure. One I, just, I just call these, it's a kind of geranium. I have and it, some. It yeah. seems to bloom a lot longer than Johnson's Blue. Beautiful. Okay, in this little corner, we have, um, I've got one little, um, this is a small apple tree that I got from the Duncans. Actually, we had three of them and, and two just there was just too much in here for them and I can't remember the name of this but I bought it for Larry because he did the Larry built the brick wall that's behind and so when I went to choose the apples I said anything connected like Churchill's brick wall so this could be a Blenheim it could be a some name connected with right. that and then along from here, I've tucked in just a few. I love tucking in veggies wherever I can, especially kale. Out the front, I didn't show you, but I've got kale tucked in out I'm the front. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so um, beans, kale, and the, there's even a zucchini coming up there. I see that. And then yeah. this clematis that grows up here. I wish I could remember the name of it. It is just the most prolific thing. It's the one that grows up from nothing in the... Um, you in cut the it right back. Yeah in the spring or winter and then it just takes off. It's the purple one. It is. That's all you have to know. It's the purple one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what's this beautiful thing? This is Procosmia and it's uh, Lucifer, the big variety. And yes. obviously I didn't get it tied up well enough. Um, it's lovely though. It looks it like is. a fountain. It is. It's nice to have it just sort of free and growing as it wants to grow. Gorgeous. And you have some lovely big uh, Rhododendrons, Rhododendrons that yeah, are kind of done. In between, there's a rose. a rose. Yeah, right. Very pretty. Yeah, lovely. Well, take us back into your, okay. your backyard. This is um, this plaque in the gate has an interesting history. We found it in my father's basement when we were clearing it out, and it's from the Drake Hardware in Victoria from years ago. And on the back, it says it's from England. It gives the town it begins with a K. I think it's in Yorkshire, and it's for a part for washing machines. So this Drake Hardware in Victoria was bringing all these um, washing machine and mangle parts out and so that we fitted into the gate just as an interest. That's really neat. Well let's go into your little hideaway garden in the back here because it's a, it's outstanding. Okay this is um, an abutilon. There's a, they come either in yellow or orange and this is a beauty with its uh, red and yellow coloring and I think if you're at Butchert's and you're going up towards the carousel on the left hand side you'll see that they've got quite a few and they must overwinter them and then put them out and I have another one that's just plain orange and I need I have to overwinter it this is my first year for this one and um, this little one is Alstroemeria, and it's one of the named varieties that Botanus, the big bulb company in uh, Langley, um, have in their catalog. And another plant that I'm really, really pleased with, this is Dias Diastrus. Di is that this one here? Yeah, the orange one. It's amazing. It went right through this cold winter. And so, um, because I like an accent of orange throughout the garden, um, I'm certainly going to get more of those next year. Okay, this is our little garden room. It's um, just a nice, quiet, shady little spot on a hot summer afternoon. Um, it has a fireplace. Larry built this. He did the um, research on how, on fireplaces, and it was quite interesting how to read about the old fireplaces and how they made them, because in the old days they had children going up and cleaning them. So right. this was a... I forget what it was in the chimney, this, but it, it, anyway, it made it better. I should have looked up the name of it. 
And <clears throat> so here I've got a few things. The, um, the New Guinea impatience is doing well, but here at the side, uh, one of my big problems in this garden is rats, and they eat lobelia. They love lobelia. So I had two beautiful, big, proven winner lobelia on either side of this, and they just chewed it right down. So it's like catnip for rats. Yeah, I guess it is, because they've got it all over, and they've chewed it everywhere, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they have. So uh, this is a, another abutilant here, and, um, and then the variegated leaf... Um, geranium that I really love. And over in the corner is a chocolate vine, which is lovely in early spring. I wish the bloom was later where we could be outside and enjoying it. And what does it look like? Uh, just a small chocolatey colored blossom. And it, is that a clematis? Kind of clematis? No, no, I don't think it is. It's, it's a climbing It's climbing got a different vine. name and it begins with an A, the Latin name, and I can't remember it. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. Beautiful. All right, shall we go to, uh, would you like to go to the back in here? Sure. Is there okay. anything in here that you want to tell us about? Um, okay, this is the back part of the garden, and I try and fit in as much as I can with pots and uh, tubs, and um, I have one of the garden trugs at the back, on the, along the back fence, that I grow lettuce in the winter, and um, it's got kale, dill, uh, lemon cucumber in it right now, and underneath uh, zucchini and um, a couple of tomatoes, thanks, the yellow ones, thanks to Anne Fredank. Okay, so this is the trug, and it, you can see it wired in and again because of my problem with rats here this year. They, uh, all the lettuce was quite trimmed down. I had to put um, uh, hmm, wire, little wire cages around each lettuce plant in order to, um, to save them. And I pretty much uh, let, I put, I put in lettuce, but I let a lot of other things grow. There's a nasturtium in there, and as I mentioned, there are lemon cucumbers in there, and um, very much like my garden. If it wants to grow, I'll try and help it to grow. I'm not um, a, a really organized gardener. Um, and this is the uh, one of um, Anne Fredank's yellow tomatoes. And she calls them candies because they're just like candy, those little yellow ones. Little yellow yes, ones. They're oh, excellent. Neat, neat, neat. <laughs> and my rosemary. And um, this tomato plant is one of the ones, I think it's it's got little black spots on it. I forget what they call it, but it's hmm. red with a dark on it. Beautiful. And then around the corner here, we have a little si sitting area. Oh, a... look! Today! Oh, what is just it? Just came. Morning clothes? Yeah! You have to get that a pretty one. Wow. Oh, neat. Nice surprise. Yes, that is a surprise. Yeah. So the hydrangeas have done really well this year. Um, upsetting because we lost our fence, but uh, on the good side, because they have had more sunshine, I think we've got more blossoms. So that, that's a little on the plus side. And this is just kind of, this little corner of the garden is just lovely, really, really early in the spring. It catches the warm spring sunshine and we come and bring our coffee out here and sit. And it's just, um, yeah, you just sort of make these little corners in your garden of areas that you love. Uh, another hydrangea in the garden that's doing well this year is Annabelle. Um, tends to have rather floppy stems though. And I've got a, a wire half moon or half circle in here and I'd sure love to find another source of those to help hold hydrangeas and grasses and things up. <clears throat> okay. Gorgeous. I love your Clematis too. Now this one is one. interesting. This was here when we bought the house this yeah. year. And soil was dumped on top of it, disappeared. And then a year later, up it came. It's so very pretty. That is amazing. Uh, it's like the other one, only it's got huge yes. flowers on it. Yes. Yeah, similar color. Ja this is, I think this is a Jack Manny. I know uh, that. So I just and, and what kind of trees are these? Because we had trees like that in front of my house when I was a little kid in a squamalt. So I have fond memories oh. of the smell of the squash mm -hmm. berries. Oh, you yeah. never forget that. Yeah. Do you know what they are? Oh, ash trees. Like ash? Ash tree. Ash. Yeah, they're yeah. very nice. 
Yeah. yeah. And then the birds come and just do they eat the berries too? Them. Yes, they do. You gotta love that. Yeah. This is beautiful. And the begonias, I overwinter them, and I wish that I had um, pruned them a bit. This one's not so bad. This one in here is rather tall and rangy, tall. Yeah. and I need to learn about um, pruning um, begonias. That one's tall, and that one there too. Yeah, very nice. But the the thing that's interesting about begonias right now, I went to Elk Lake to because I thought I would tuck a couple more in, mm -hmm. and the only ones that they had have been developed to take a lot of sunshine. And oh. I and I'm thinking, oh, begonias are supposed to grow well in the shade. Right. <laughs> Where are your shady ones? And the girl there said, they've all gone. Oh, well, we'll have to look at the word out yeah. in the club that we need cuttings from real begonias. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about your pond. Um, yeah, and I've got to just get the name of that big leaf thing. <laughs> Here's my crib sheet. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's something like elephant something, isn't it? Uh, water plant. Darmera peltata. Oh, Do you think God. I can remember that? Don. No. No. Let's give it a new name. Yeah. <laughs> it's called pond elephant leaf plant. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, please tell us about your beautiful, okay. your beautiful pond. Okay. So um, getting back to the wall, this was when we built the house, as I mentioned, that we were so exposed here. And I saw this picture in a magazine of a brick wall. And I said to Larry, I'd just love to have a brick wall along here. And so the fellow that had built the chimney for the house said that he would come on the weekends and help, but he got a big job and he couldn't come and he left Larry with just a real few instructions like <laughs> have always keep your um, a, a string line to make sure that everything stays horizontal and uh, from that Larry built this whole thing it's, on, it's on his own. It's just fabulous. I in fact, it. I've got a picture of him out here at night coming home after he had a stressful job in the school district and he would come home <laughs> and put the light on and be out here putting Therapy. another brick in. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so we've grown a few um, uh, water plants in here and um, um, Jackson, the fellow that does helps with the gardening, he brought this last year. Um, it's this big leafed fellow so it'll be interesting to see how it makes out yeah. and we were lucky enough to get two blooms this year and even though I know it's a minimum of six hours of sunshine so we must be just breaking breaking it in order to get the um the lilies to bloom we got two here two. and I, I love your maiden hair ferns yes they're one of my favorites they're just so delicate and it really accentuates this this outstanding fellow here. Yeah, the difference <laughs> in the foliage, doesn't it? The yeah. grass and the, the big foliage and then, um, yeah, the maiden here ferns. Yeah. I see there's some new little ones yes, coming. Yes, they're all coming. Here. It looks like they're almost growing out of the bricks. Yeah, the they are. There. They yeah. are. Yeah. Gorgeous. Sorry, you were going to tell us about something right. over so here. Right, so over here, um, this is just kind of a mix, mix mash of stuff. Um, I've got, often I keep more parsley in here, and mm -hmm. I think there's a sage down there and the thyme, and... Um, You've got a lovage there. Yes, <laughs> yes. And that would, you know what, good for you to say that, because what I wasn't sure what... It came in another, in, another in a pack, pack? Oh. with something else, and I thought, oh, well, I'll just see what this is and it's, put it in. It's excellent if you're making a soup or a stew, if you put a couple of leaves in it, it gives the flavor of celery. Oh, nice. That's what it does, yeah. It's does very it grow good. very big? Yeah, it can grow up oh. to this tall, Okay. and um, and then it gets it gets seeds, and you can just chop it right back when it seeds, and it'll grow again. Yeah, and it'll perfect. always come up there. Well, perfect place for it then. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what's along Beautiful. this bed. Okay. Uh, this is a very shady bed, and um, I've got a, one begonia hanging there, another one that I've overwintered, and then the hostess here. Sadly, somebody had a chew of this one. The beautiful big hosta here. And uh, this, I have lily of the valley growing in here for early spring. And, um, yeah. Well, you can see my eclectic mix. This is truly a tapestry weaver's garden because there's a little bit of color here, there, and textures. Um, 
the, the lobe thistle has done better this year than it's done other years. This um, GM, this was interesting. Um, I wanted to you'd find an orange one and I'd looked around Victoria and couldn't find it. And when we were camping up at Comox, I went to that lovely little nursery call on Anderton Road. I think it's called Anderton Nursery. Just a delightful little nursery if you've never been there. And it, in behind, it has a beautiful garden that's kept by volunteers. A, tr a, tr a tranquility garden, I think it's called, and it's just a delight to go and visit and find. It's really beautiful. Um, so I've got a few dahlias in here, limelight um, hydrangea in the back there, and um, th just a flight of fancy. This red dahlia that's here, I just picked up the bulb and you know in the dollar store it said it was purple and I thought oh purple <laughs> will go here but no it's red <laughs> it, it is, had another is that a lace uh yes. hydrangea in the back yes it they're is they're my favorites yes yeah yeah beautiful the cat of uh, sculpture that was a class I took up at Qualicum Bay at Cat House Gallery and the lady there gives classes once a month and um if you drive past her gallery on the old highway, you'll see she's got big cats like this all on the roof of her house. That's what drew me to it. And so during the class, uh, someone did a heron and someone did a, um, oh, a heron, yeah, a heron. I was trying to think, oh, a mermaid. So you, almost anything. And you take um, chicken wire and she shows you how to roll it all up and form it. And um, yeah, that was a fun class. Did Thank you me. spray it afterwards? Yes, yes. With something yes, white? Yes, yeah. a white paint afterwards. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. It's really neat. And then over here is uh, uh, my sweet peas. And uh, we have a family tradition. When my youngest daughter was born, she is 50 this year, mm -hmm. uh, my mother arrived at my bedside with a big bouquet of sweet peas on June the 10th. And every year after that, myself, my mom, and her sister always competed to see who could have sweet peas by June the 10th. Very seldom if I've ever made it. Usually July 1st is as close as I can get it, but it's just become a family tradition. Um, so GMs and, um, oh, and this uh, daisy, a double Shasta. It's a botanist um, daisy from their company and the stippa in behind and um, we put an elder in this to to just for a little uh, darker color trying to one of the themes through the garden is the smoke bush out the front with its dark uh, color and the elder and then picking up colors like purples um, and uh, the GM orange. And those are kind of the, the underlying theme of color in the garden. Um, I also try and um, tuck in a few veggies. Usually I, in the fall, I put in kale. I've got kale in pots all ready to go in here. And we've got beans um, and the big, um, pheasant, I think this is pheasant grass. I think that's what this one's called. Beautiful. And then around the corner, I have some barrels that I put early lettuce in and just something that needs protection. Right now, it's too shady to really grow anything in there. And then this year, we put um, a couple of Carl Forrester grasses in beside the front door. <clears throat> oh yeah, very nice. And more tomatoes? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and it's usually tomatoes don't do very well here. Being close to the ocean, it's too um, cool for them. Mm -hmm. But I just couldn't resist again trying. And the um, I think it's doing quite well. That's a yeah. sweet 100. Yeah. No, so it looks it looks, it like looks it, excellent. We might have something on it this year. Yeah. Yeah. So in the winter, how does being right close to the ocean affect you? Do you get spray? Yes, it's uh, something to, to keep 
in consideration that any plant that doesn't like spray certainly isn't going to thrive here and some plants can take it better than others and in fact there's enough spray that our windows are always covered with spray during the winter so you do know that it has an effect on the garden. Do you have to wash them off or, or anything or do they, they the ones you have just manage it okay in the, the winter? The plants mostly they manage it. They just it. manage yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it, it kind of outweighs the, the problems it might cause because you have a fabulous view here and it just smells lovely. Of course, I think that's partly because of your flowers and your <laughs> the sweet, the sweet, the sweet peas. peas. You can really smell yeah. them. Yeah. Well, your garden is absolutely stunning and it's just a real haven for such a small space. You've packed so much in. Uh, I love how you've organized things and it's, it's like a park. It's just beautiful. Oh, thank you thank so you. much. And you know, I just remembered the name of the plant oh, that I was that? trying. <laughs> what is it? It's this one here, and it's monk's hood. Monk's hood, I've heard and of that. And it has beautiful blue flowers. In fact, a friend of mine said she grows it instead of delphidiums because oh. delphidiums are so susceptible to slugs and what mm -hmm. have you, whereas mm -hmm. the monk's hood is stronger. But it doesn't come out until into August. Into August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Well, thanks again. Your place okay. is absolutely beautiful. Okay. I can hardly wait till we have another meeting and we see your sweet <laughs> smiling face oh, welcoming you. us at the, big, at, the, at the front door. So thank, thank you, you so much, Diane. Thanks, Janet. It was fun to show, share my garden. The members are going to love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs>